Welcome back everyone. Hard to believe, but I'm almost at 15,000 subs. I just hit 10,000 back in November, I think it was, and already approaching 15,000 subs. Yeah, you know, it took me forever to get to 10,000. Took me what? You know, a little over 5 years. Well, there's something that's driving me crazy though about YouTube is I put up a video demonetized. Put up a video demonetized. Yeah, you know, it's it's happening happening with great regularity and I don't know what's going on. If if it's their uh algorithm, then it sucks. It, there's really nothing in my videos that should cause them to be demonetized but you know they need to fix this it's, it's annoying but anywho why I'm here doing this video is an interesting conversation broke out from the last video is about the um, photo transistor and incandescent light bulbs what if I put an audio signal into these and what would they do can you hear the music from the filament you know, I would think they would behave as a low-pass filter because the thermal response of the filament, the thermal mass of the tungsten filament inside, it's not going to change that much being at high temperatures. So it would be like a low-pass filter. It would change more with lower frequencies than it would with high frequencies. So I thought it would be interesting to try that out. So what I did here, I have that same circuit I was talking about in the last video, the little phototransistor circuit, which is here. And then I need something to drive the incandescent bulbs with. It has enough power. So I use this uh, lab amp, or abuse amp as I call it, because I abuse the heck out of it. It's an LM1875 amp on the board here, and we have a power supply and its output will drive the incandescent light bulb and of course we'll put it near the phototransistor and connect that to the scope and the audio amplifier and listen to its output and check the waveform try a few different wattage bulbs to see what the effect is they're all the same style bulbs and you know I have um, one of them's like two watts around about that 5 watt and then an 8 watt one so we'll see what those do okay start out with the 8 watt bulb bring it around this way turn the function generator on I'll have to find the right position or it will cause clipping, overdrive the photo transistor. And that's around 50, 60 hertz. And it's making a pretty strong signal. Let me uh, increase that. We're actually getting signal up to 280 hertz. Rolls off around 200 hertz. I mean it's pretty gradual but I'm the 3 dB down point would be somewhere around 200 I, I would say I can actually hear that that's pretty high One thing I noticed is the bulbs are kind of microphonic when you, when you tap them. You kind of hear that in the speaker. Okay, that was interesting. Let this bulb cool off a little bit and try a 5 watt one. 
Okay, 5 watt. Because the different brightness is in the bulb, I have to find a new position. You know, set the distance from the photo transistor just right. I don't know, it's hard to tell. This sounds like it might have more response, higher end response. Now if I, it's definitely coming from the bulb. You know, I put my hand in front of it, it blocks it out. Okay then, let's try the two watt one I think it is have to put that one a lot closer I don't know, that seems to have about the same response as the 5 watt bulb did. It all depends on, like I say, the, the filament, you know, how heavy the filament is inside. It won't focus on that. There it goes. This camera likes to be a little laggy with the focus. Also, if it has a fill gas inside or not, around 6 to 10 watts per centimeter of filament is the threshold when they start using a fill gas. When it goes over that they'll put a fill gas in. When it's under that it's usually a vacuum and it just has to do with the thermodynamics of how the gas removes the the heat from the filament. You know a real thin filament is going to lose a lot of heat so you don't want to use a fill gas with that. Whereas the uh, heavier filament will benefit by having a fill gas. It'll keep it from evaporating as quick. And um, so they'll put a fill gas in it. I learned that from the Don Klipstein website. He used to be on Usenet like 20 some years ago. And I remember other guys there, even Big Clive was in the... Uh, engineering I forget the the name of the group it was like Psy engineering lighting um, Don was there a guy named Vic and Big Clive would even stop in I don't remember his I think he used the same name Big Clive even back then 20 years ago in Usenet but yeah just a little uh, internet trivia for you okay so now the last thing I'm going to hook up some music and play music through that and see how the bulb does. I had to take this resistor out of the uh, the base circuit. Just wasn't that sensitive playing music because it the intensity of the light changes so much. Well, it doesn't work worth the crap. You can kind of hear music. It's really distorted. But I'm actually surprised at the higher frequencies you can hear. But for transmitting music with this, nah, it's, it doesn't work too well. Well, that was an interesting experiment. Thanks for watching.